Hey everybody, Ashley here from Wayside Waves. Um, you are about to watch a really cool video starring uh, one of our vet techs, Ashley, and her dog, Patrick. She's going to teach you uh, or show you how to do a vet exam. One really important thing we want you to remember um, is that for this, if you're going to do it along with her after you watch the video, um, we encourage you to use a stuffed animal uh, because we don't want anybody getting hurt, okay? So practice your vet exams on a stuffed animal not a real animal. Uh, there are some things that you can do on a real animal, but make sure you know your animal really, really well and you are watching their body language the whole time to make sure that you're not making your animal uncomfortable uh, and you don't risk getting hurt. Okay? Enjoy the video. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and this is my dog party, Patrick. I am a registered veterinary technician for Wayside Waves. And so what that means is that I've taken a national exam and I have become certified, so I'm a registered nurse. As for what I do at Wayside, I am the lead surgery technician. So each day I bring all the animals that are going to have surgery in, I get them sedated, I monitor them, I do a physical exam while they're under sedation, and then I make sure they recover properly. So to get things started for today, I'm just going to walk you through on how to give a proper physical exam. Patrick here is going to be my model. He's a little amped up because we haven't gone to the park today, but hopefully he lets me do what I need to do. When you're doing a physical exam, you want to make sure that you have some really high value treats or something that the animal likes because that'll help you keep their focus rather than them getting all crazy. So Patrick here, you might realize that he only has three legs. So when we're doing all the limbs, he's not going to have his front right one, but we'll just get started. The first thing for a physical exam is you want to just look at the overall appearance of the animal. Are they dirty? Do they have any dry patches? Do they have any bald spots? Are their ears clean? You want to look in each ear. I know, good boy, good boy. And then just kind of feel them all over for lumps and bumps and scratchy things. You don't know if he has got ticks under this long fur. So with your animal, you're kind of just going to want to work from head to toe. So as we're moving down the body, just kind of feel them for him. And Patrick thinks this is the best thing that's ever happened to him. All right, pal. So I would say overall appearance, Patrick has very shiny fur. Come here, bud. So next, we're going to look at the eyes and the ears. For the eyes, sit, Pat. You want to make sure that they're clear, that there's no gunk forming around them. Sometimes they get some crusties in the corners of their eyes. You want to make sure that there's no sort of scratches around the eyes or the ears because that can indicate that something else is happening. So if he's scratching at his ears, that could mean that something is irritating him. So now we'll go down to your path. We're going to use our stethoscope and listen. So the stethoscope is going to allow us to listen to the heart and the lung sounds. Your path. Ready? When you put on your stethoscope, I'm going to put mine on with the ears facing inwards. You want to make sure the room's quiet around you. I know, I know, I know. And so, when you have your stethoscope, you want to stick it under their left armpit. That's where you're going to get the best heart sound. So here, Patrick, ready? So as he's eating that, we just kind of hold on to the dog. And you want to listen for their heart sound. And it's going to sound like a lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. So you're going to hear two heart noises. You're only going to count the lub dub as one noise. So each pulse is lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Pat, ready? Come here. And now we're going to listen to the lung noises. Good boy. So the lungs are going to be down a little lower. And you're just kind of listening around. And you want to make sure there's no crackling noises, no wheezing sounds coming from his lungs. That means everything's going to be very clear for his airways and nothing's going to be bothering his breaths. Moving down, one of the scariest part about giving an animal an exam is looking in the mouth because their mouths are filled with very sharp and a lot of teeth. So with Mr. Patrick here, I'm going to use a treat as one of my biggest tools. So I can kind of look in his mouth with his mouth open and panting like that and I can see does he have any red lines around his gums 
because just like humans, dogs get gingivitis. Same with cats. We want to look at his tongue. We want to make sure that there's no dark red marks on it. Those are ulcers, and that can indicate something bad is happening in their mouth, like a disease process. And kind of just go for the, the smell of his mouth. Is there anything gross? Buddy, come on. Let's see. Now for the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are these little nodes that live throughout the body, and they cycle and filter through the lymph. And lymph is an, it indicates an immune response. So if these lymph nodes throughout the body are swollen, that can indicate that there's an inflammatory response or an infection somewhere in the body. Come here, Pat. The two biggest ones, come here, Pat. I know, we only got a little left. Come here, ready? Oh. So, Mr. Patrick, unfortunately, only has one axial lymph node. It's gonna be right back here behind the armpit. And see how he's using, the, I'm using the treats to help keep control of him. So I'm gonna feel for this, and it's gonna feel like a little grape. So that one feels fine. And then the other ones, there's some right in here next to this artery, so the inside of his thigh. I'm gonna feel in here, that's fine. We're gonna to go to the other side, that's fine too. And then there's one behind the knees. Patrick's not gonna like this very much because he doesn't like his legs being touched. But you see how I'm just gently hugging him to kind of keep control of his head? So those feel fine behind his legs. And I think, come here. The last thing that you really wanna do, come here buddy. Oh no, we're out of treats. Is you wanna do a full abdominal exam. This is gonna make it so that you can feel any lumps and bumps in his belly. You can feel his rib cage. So when an animal's ribs, you can feel them through his skin, that's actually a good thing. We like our dogs to be a little too fat for uh, medical needs, but uh, the way that you can kind of judge the weight of an animal and see if it's appropriate is using your own hand. So if you make a fist like this, and I rub against Patrick's ribs here, his ribs should feel like the backs of my fingers. So you wanna feel just a little bit of padding and a little bit of rib cage. Come down. If you go along the back side of your hand, you can kind of feel your bones a little bit, but that means your dog's too fat if this is what their belly feels like. But if you go around your top of your knuckles, if it feels like that, that's way too thin. So they wanna put on weight on those animals. So we're going for the tops of the fingers, if you're here, let's lose some weight. If you're here, let's gain some weight. Mr. Patrick, he is a perfect top of fingers. So he's doing really well with his weight. And I think that might be it for a physical exam. If you don't find anything like broken teeth or lumps and bumps on their body, if they don't have green stuff coming out of their nose or their eyes, if their ears are clean, then these guys are good to go. That's how we determine that animal's healthy enough to go home. If there's anything else that we find that needs taken care of, we'll take care of it. But for now, I think Mr. Patrick is as healthy as a horse.